Teacher Janelle. For sure, I'm not here to stand here and bring you good news. I am here now to bring you grammar. Yes, and I don't think grammar is good news to everyone, but grammar is sometimes, or it is useful, but as I always say, grammar is not everything. But we still talk about it because it's one of the components of language that is also very helpful to everyone. I will not say the word simple. We are going to talk about changing direct speech to indirect. I understand that this is a bit taxing and tedious, but I would uh, encourage you to go through the tedious task because once you understand this, it would be a lot easier for you to go through it once more, and the second, and the third, and the next one, and so on. So, because you have surpassed the tedious task. Okay? So, um, before we go there, that matrix. Let's have this sentence first. She said, I love chocolates and high fashion. She said, I love chocolates and high fashion. So let's try to dissect the components of this statement. Said there is what we call, she said. Said is the reporting verb. The sentence enclosed in the quotation mark, that is what we call the reported sentence. So the verb inside the reported sentence is the reported verb. So the verb inside the quotation mark is the reported verb. So those are the, the definitions or the, let's just say, the terms you need to consider. Because when we are going to go through the discussion, I will be mentioning those verbs. Let's go now to the matrix. I would like to introduce to you the components of the matrix that I have crafted for the purpose of guidance. So this matrix, voila, here it is. So what do you see here in the yellow portion? That would teach you, or let's just say, make you go through the basic rules, the very basic rules, and how to change direct statement to indirect or reported speech. We have there one, two, three, four, five. I only have presented to you five. Beside the yellow circle is the green, the greenish circle. Is this ever green or is that an apple green? It's greenish. So you have there uh, two columns. So the one in your left, that is for when you see those words in direct speeches or direct uh, statements. Then opposite, the one in your right, that's what happens to those words when they are changed to indirect speech? Like now becomes then, and so on and so forth. Then below the green circle, you have other changes there. So there are other words that you might see in the direct speech that would change when you transform the sentence into indirect. So you have there, this becomes that, these becomes those, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's go down below to the matrix proper. You can see there the tenses of the verbs. So, tenses of the verbs, I did not put everything there. So, you only have simple, simple tenses, present and past, and future. Then, present progressive and the present and the past progressive, present perfect and the past perfect tenses. So, those are the tenses that I have only shown in this matrix. Then what you see there in the column that says direct speech, these are all declarative sentences. Declarative. So they just denote the statement and it tells us what is going on. State of being. So these statements, uh, these uh, lines that you see in this matrix, uh, I mean in this column, these are actually reported statements. So when you see this in a full sentence, these Word. These uh, sentences found in this column are enclosed in quotation marks. Uh, this one. She said, I love chocolates and high fashion. So, I love chocolates and high fashion. That is a reported sentence. So, this is to be found inside the quotation mark. Okay? So, next, uh, the column that says indirect speech. So this is what happens when the statements in direct speech are transformed to 
reported or indirect. So I love dark chocolates and high fashion. She said she loves dark chocolates and high fashion because she said that she loved chocolates and high fashion. So you see, there are changes in how the verbs should look when they are transformed into indirect. So this is the purpose actually of the matrix, so that you would see those changes in the verb. That is why I am showing the tenses of the verb to the corresponding changes that would happen to these verbs in indirect speech or recorded speech. So the simple present tenses becomes simple past when transformed to indirect. Can becomes couldn't or could and so on and so forth. You can just, you can just click the link down below in the descriptions below. It will lead you to my blog where you can avail or you can, you can get a copy of this matrix. I already introduced you the declaratives, the one in the second column, the direct speech. These are for declarative statements. So there are other forms like imperatives. So what is an imperative? When it asks you to do something that's imperative. Like example, the teacher said to me, shut the door. So that's an imperative because you are asked to shut the door. We also have interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences? Yes, they are just questions. Then we have exclamatory sentences. Exclamatory sentences, they express emotions, grave emotions, deep emotions. Exclamatory? Okay. Then the last one we have there is the optative sentences. These sentences, they express hope. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the tense of the reporting verb. What's the reporting verb again? That is the verb outside the quotation mark. So in this sentence, she said to me, I can't speak perfect English. The reporting verb is said. Said is the past tense. So since it is the past tense, our basic rule says we only change the tense of the verb in the reported speech into another tense if the reporting verb is in the past tense. So since said is in the past tense, we have a go signal. Okay, next, we're going to identify the verb in the reported speech. So what is that verb? I can't speak English. So the verb there in the reported speech is speak. So you can just label that and then we identify the tense. That is simple present tense. Why do we need to identify that tense? Because we are going back to the matrix. Simple present. Now look at the simple present column. I mean the, the row. Then you will be guided. What happens to speak when you are going to convert that into indirect? So what tense of the verb? Then, next, I want you to look at can't. Still, what happens to can't when it is transformed into indirect? As you can see in the matrix, it becomes couldn't. Okay? Now, before we go further, let us identify first the type of sentence the reported speech is. So this is obviously declarative. So we are going to look at the columns in the declarative found in the matrix. Which column is that? The one that is given there. That's all declarative. So next, if there are pronouns, we need to identify the pronouns because they, these pronouns, they are still going to be converted. Because I, when converted, when, when converted into indirect, becomes she. How did you know it's she? Because the entire statement says, she said to me, I can't speak perfect English. So we have an idea that the speaker in the quotation mark or in the direct speech is a she. Okay, so I becomes she. Then, going back to the reporting verb, which is said, but there is two there, said to me. When you transform that into indirect, you would not use said uh, the same uh, phrase. You would not say said to me. It has to be changed. So that is why I put there told. 
So when you transform said to becomes told when you transform it into indirect. So how should indirect look like? She told me she couldn't speak perfect English. Again, she told me she couldn't speak perfect English. You might be asking, you said that speak will be transformed. A simple present becomes simple past. But why is it not transformed? Simply because there is a helping verb. There is an auxiliary. What auxiliary are we talking about? The word can't. So you have to bear in mind that the verb that it must always be in the base form. So that is why even if this is a simple present, you cannot change it into simple past when you convert it because of the word can't. So you only transform or change can't into couldn't. That's how to change direct speech into indirect using the matrix that I made. Once again, you can get a copy of my matrix. Just follow the link down below in the descriptions. You can actually find that in my blog. Okay, my Scholastic Hub, you'd find it there. So, to top for now, bye-bye.